Hello and welcome to Barely Contained, another trawl through the murky depths of celebrity journalism. I'm Chris Beckett and joining me for this plunge into the abyss is Matt Withers. That's me. And kicking us off, I have one from the Sunday Express. Tim Lovejoy stuns as he drops enormous Sunday brunch bombshell. This is my last show. This is a bit of good news. Tim Lovejoy made a revelation on Sunday brunch earlier today, which prompted him to reveal that he could be leaving the Channel 4 show imminently. OK, this is good. I imagine uh, it, it, it's nothing of the sort, but... Well, let's just carry on, see, see what we find. The stalwart presenter announced that he received a very interesting email last night, which would be the envy of all. Is he a stalwart presenter? Is he? Is he William G. Stewart? He's, he's not William G. Stewart. He's not David Dimbleby. He's not really even Fern Cotton, let's be honest. <laughs> no. Before they got round to Tim's news, the Channel 4 team quickly wished guest Suggs a happy birthday as he turned 57 today. Now, this is uh, already a very interesting kind of uh, structural narrative here. So rather than actually telling the classic who, what, when, where, why, uh, it's literally just what happened in that episode of Sunday Brunch uh, in order. Yeah, it feels like the the writer has had to kind of restrain himself from writing about the Silip Bang commercial <laughs> midway through. The Madness frontman joked that his birthday wish would not to be on Sunday brunch if possible. Oh, I mean, that's entirely understandable. Tim laughed, I don't need to make a wish because I won the lottery. Has he won the lottery? This is intriguing. Read on, read on. Before I came on air, I got an email saying I have to log in. I'm probably really rich. I'm loaded, he yelled as co-host Simon Rimmer, 54, hastily added that he's his best mate, clearly hoping for a share of the winnings. Now, Rimmer, Lovejoy, Suggs. If there's one thing that Sunday brunch serves up every week, it's diversity. Oh, it really, it really, it really does tick every box, doesn't it? Those three men, middle-aged. White. White. <laughs> straight. From, from the south of London. <laughs> yeah. so, south of London, probably south of England, more accurately. Tim, 49, revealed, this is my last show ever. Hooray! <laughs> I've never actually watched it, to be honest. It was all, of course, one of Tim's classic gags. Classic gags! <laughs> that ran through the entirety of the show as a <laughs> joke with Simon that he had most likely been hacked. Oh, Lovejoy, very much uh, this generation's Tommy Cooper. I would imagine that most of Tim Lovejoy's attempts at jokes are probably uh, actually cases of him being hacked <laughs> rather than actually deliberate acts at humour. Later on in Sunday Brunch, Simon Rimmer fell victim to Gemma Atkinson's teasing. OK, so we've established now. We're not going to find any more out about this uh, this main crux of the story. Yeah, let's move on. Let's move, move on. on. The Strictly Come Dancing contestant was left red-faced when his fellow competitor took a cheeky swipe at him. Tim joked that he had a bad back from carrying Simon through the show as he balanced his dancing commitments with his presenting duties. Gemma got the punchline when she added that his professional partner, Karen Clifton, suffered the same problem. It's not punchline, is it? She's quick on the uptake, go, though, <laughs> Atkinson. You know, you, you feed her a line and she'll she'll hook on. She's, she's not slow. What's more, Simon found himself downbeat after Gemma insisted on talking about her incredible time on Strictly Come Dancing. The Sunday brunch host was knocked out of the BBC competition in week six, but Gemma made it through to the final. The former Emmerdale star laughed. You got to dress up as Buzz Lightyear, though. Yeah, mm. I mean, if you watch Simon Rimmer on Strictly Come Dancing, which unfortunately I did on a couple of occasions, he looked like a marionette being controlled by a committed psychopath. <laughs> Sunday brunch here, Sundays on Channel 4 at 9.30am. Absolute stream of consciousness. Bullshit. <laughs> Right, Chris, I am going stateside with this next story, which appears on Mail Online and is headlined Malia Obama is spotted smiling and chatting with her post British boyfriend who enjoys a cigarette in New York. So with that headline, does that mean he he enjoys having cigarettes but only in New York? Or, I, I, or they're in New York and he's having a cigarette. Well, we'll find out. It's certainly a very snappy headline, very much up there with gotcha. There was plenty of love and laughter as former first daughter Malia Obama was spotted enjoying the company of her British beau, Rory Farquhar Harson. <laughs> it's like it's made up, isn't it? It's like a Simpsons idea of what a posh British version Lord should be called. Lord <laughs> yeah. illegitimate nephew. 
Rory Farquharson in New York City at the weekend. It's also his first daughter, I think. Is that a thing? I think they've made it, I think. <laughs> I, I thought where they were starting with, there was plenty of love and laughter. <laughs> I thought it was almost going to go into the Russ Abbott theme. <laughs> oh, tears <laughs> of joy. Oh, I tell you what, though. Rest in peace, Bella Emberg. Bless Rest her. in peace. Bless her. Rest in peace, blonde the woman. Rory first entered the media spotlight when he was caught passionately kissing President Barack Obama's eldest daughter before a Harvard-Yale football game in November. Mm. Uh, and if these latest pictures are anything to go by, the loved-up couple are still going strong. I'm looking at these pictures and it shows a picture of two people in their probably uh, late teens or early 20s looking at each other. Yeah, they're very much looking at each other. They're, um, they're talking to each other. Um, third picture here, but he's talking to her. She's kind of looking away. Um, a, a caption here says, Marley is beau, second use of beau, um, is a former head boy of rugby school and considered by insiders as a catch. Insiders, <laughs> eh? Marlia, 19, who took a gap year before starting at Harvard this fall. Oh, did... what's, what's going on here? I, I thought the Mail Online was going to be, you know, catering for a bloody British audience. It is. I mean, obviously, this was what Brexit meant, that we would start uh, adopting the US vernacular. This fall, even gets worse, met her sophomore boyfriend at their Ivy League university. Do you say sophomore or sophomore? Well, I just said sophomore. Well, I think <laughs> sophomore sounds a little bit like a sort of DFS rival. Okay, is it, okay, is it sophomore? I think it's probably sophomore. And did he mean sophomore here in the literal term of him being in his second year at university or sophomore in the way that NME used to refer to um, a band's second album as being their sophomore effort? He could be... Her disappointing second <laughs> disappointing boyfriend. Second, disappointing second album. Yeah. Failing to live up to the promise of the first uh, Lord Henry <laughs> that, that she uh, previously went out with. Very much the um, Stone Roses second album in her uh, pantheon of boyfriends. Mm. They were spotted casually chatting and sitting together on Saturday afternoon in Soho, New York City, while Rory enjoyed a cigarette. Fair enough, Rory. Rory couldn't quite take his eyes off his pretty girlfriend. Couldn't quite take his eye. Why couldn't? Why quite? He's got a, a gammy eye. <laughs> couldn't um, quite take his eye. Yeah. He's trying. <laughs> um, it's like he's like Marty Feldman. The <laughs> reference there for the younger listener. Wow. Um, while both kept themselves shielded from the weather in their designer winter coats. Lucky he, them. His smoking habit is one that Marlia herself has enjoyed on occasion, having been spotted previously smoking a cigarette. That's a real, that's a real habit she's got there. <laughs> yeah. What? Her father, Barrack. Have you heard of him, Chris? Yeah, I, I, I believe I've, I'm aware of his he, work. He's um, he was the 44th president of the United States of America. Just in case you weren't, you uh, weren't yeah. aware. Probably the main reason that she is in this story. I would have thought. You would guess was also a regular smoker prior to entering the white house which makes it sound like he <laughs> stubbed the final one out yep. on the wall Is as he it? entered the door no for the first time king <laughs> oval office rule rory is a former head boy of rugby school one of the top and this is in uh speech marks here public schools in the united kingdom and just a rung below the more famous eaton and harrow According to insiders, who, I'm going to stick my neck out here and say, do not exist, he was considered, quote, quite a catch. Rugby charges more than $42,500 a year for tuition and board. Hang on, this is purely, like, this is American, isn't it? Well, I mean, presumably, you know, the the pound is now so worthless that they only accept the, the US dollar. Um... Uh, also, rugby school is well known for giving the world the game of rugby. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, not. Um, Tell me that again. Yeah, the game of rugby, not as you might think, um, Street Fighter Two Turbo <laughs> or uh, Chef Hapney. <laughs> yeah. 
Rory played the sport and was an extra in a rugby video that played in the Rugby World Cup opening ceremony in 2015, with Prince Harry also making an appearance in the clip. Was Prince Harry playing rugby? In a, <laughs> wearing possibly. a rugby top? He probably um, was, yeah. And, I don't know, living in, in rugby. rugby. The young man, this is presumably Rory, also represented the school at golf and was a member of the Blue Bunsen Society, a chemistry club. Were you in your uh, your, your school's golf team, Chris? <laughs> I can't say I was, Matt. Um, and we didn't have a chemistry club, as far as I'm aware. We did have a chemistry club, but uh, we didn't have a golf team. No? Uh, according to his Twitter account, he seems interested in following in the banking footsteps of his father, Charles Farquhar Harson, who is a chief executive and director of an investment fund management group in London. I I have no idea what his tweets are that show that he's interested in it. Okay, and what what next? What's the next paragraph? What's what happens next? Oh no, that's it. That's it. Okay, <laughs> that's it. Right, fair enough. So basically, it looks like the last two, three, four pars. They've either got from his UCAS form yeah. or, or like some sort of LinkedIn account or, yeah, absolute shit. His Twitter account, which shows... Uh, anyway, his UCAS form, is that still a thing? I think so. Okay. Yeah, I imagine it was probably very difficult for him to get into university. Rory Farquhar, <laughs> Farquhar. His, dad, his dad, Charles Farquhar, he he's would, an investment banker. He'd be able to get into the live-action uh, cast of Shrek, the musical, though. <laughs> I can imagine thinking, yeah, I'd like to go to Harvard, uh, but just in case, my second choice is Keel. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's a close one between those two. And uh, for a final story today, Matt, we have one from The Independent, a rare offering. Woman performs surgery on injured butterfly to fix its wing. So not uh, a celebrity story per se, but to be honest, slim pickings. Well... Slim pickings, but looks like a Red Admiral. Pretty much the uh, Kim Kim Kanye of the uh, butterfly moth world. Very much. Romy McCloskey has loved butterflies for as long as she can remember. But the beautiful animal became particularly special to McCloskey after her mother died, the costume designer told BuzzFeed News. Okay, so... Is a butterfly an animal? No. Okay. <laughs> is, is it though? No, still no. <laughs> no? No, it's it's like some complicated Latin name that I looked up earlier. It's definitely not an animal. It's like a butterfly slash moth. It's an insect though, isn't it? Is an insect an animal? It's an insect. No, an insect's not an animal. Isn't it? I don't think so. Is a bird an animal? Bird's a bird. But it's not an animal. I don't think so. I think a bird is a bird. It's a person. Bird is an, a word. Is a person an animal? Yes. Okay, right. You're very, you're very definite about this. I'll let you go you're on. You're testing me. <laughs> you're testing me to the limit. But I'm pretty sure this butterfly is not an animal. Or even if it is an animal, it's not like what you should say. And that, you know, the first, if you're coming through various different nouns to describe what a butterfly is, animal wouldn't be the first one I would use. Wouldn't be the follow up. I would say moth or insect, like you said, or, you know, beautiful. Um, subject of the Carla Lane <laughs> sitcom. Oh yeah, yeah, very dark. Exactly. Very dark, metaphorical creature. I wouldn't say animal. Okay, carry on. Before she died, my mother said to me, "Romy, whenever you see a butterfly." Well, hang on, <laughs> hang on. It's this this woman's American, isn't she? So she's unlikely. Uh, hang on, hang on. Let me let me do that. Before she died, my mother said to me, "Romy, whenever you see a butterfly." Know that I am there with you and that I love you. Okay, so now we know that this mother was the grandmother from the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> when the Texas resident discovered caterpillars in her garden, she started to catch a few of them and fed them until they transformed into monarch bu- butterflies before releasing them. I apologise now for calling them red admirals. They were, of course, monarch butterflies, the princes of the sky. This is all in caps for some reason. Yeah, it is, yeah. Earlier this month, <laughs> McCloskey noticed that one was born with torn upper and lower wings that could never fly on its own. It's not just in caps, it's bolded as well. It's so important. Butterflies can get injured while forming cocoons as caterpillars. Next part, I see, is once again in caps and bold. 
Determined to help the three-day-old male, she set up an operating room full of the tools she uses as a costume designer. This is all a bit weird, isn't it? Okay. McCloskey used the wings from one of her butterflies that had sadly passed a few days before, but she said the surgery meant the wonderful gift of flight could be passed on. Hmm. Her DIY operation required some impressive inventiveness. As delicately as possible, McCloskey cut the damaged wing off and glued the transplant wing into place with contact cement, adding talcum powder to prevent too much stickiness. Have you seen the film <coughs> Human Centipede? No. It's This is kind of like a very micro version uh, of that. Is there some suggestion that she attached the butterfly to either herself or another butterfly? I'm just suggesting that she's playing God with things which one could buy from Superdrug. <laughs> What, butterflies? No, no, but, but, you know, she's using talcum powder here to try and put animals... Not animals, insects back together <laughs> again. Even you're doing it now. <laughs> this is this is the damn it. This is fake news. This is why we need to stamp out on it. Billy Independent coming around going, oh, a butterfly, or oh, animal. It's not an animal. It's an insect. It's, it's very much uh, a contender for President Trump's fake news award. Sad. Sad. Yeah. <laughs> and also, Absolute yeah. Absolute loser. Talcum powder to prevent too much stickiness. Well, we've all been there. Uh, this might sound pa- painful, but it feels similar to getting a haircut to the butterfly. Does it? Does it, though? <laughs> Does it, it's a butterfly thinking, <sighs> I imagine this feels what it's like for human beings to get a haircut, despite the fact I'm only kind of vaguely aware of human beings. don't really have an idea what a haircut is, because I'm a butterfly. Post, post-wing replacement interview with a butterfly. What's that like? The, I suppose the closest thing I could say was a bit like a haircut. Very much like a haircut, which I'm not aware of, because <laughs> what, what, I have a brain the size of a pinprick. What is your frame of reference? Crazy moths. Remarkably, it worked, and the butterfly was able to fly away. Incredible! <laughs> That's brilliant. That is brilliant. The last part is literally <coughs> just the word incredible in capital letters and bolded up. In the independent, well, yeah, the indie100.com. The indie has certainly leapt its way into the l- lowest ranks of social media, really, for some of its uh, outpourings. Right, and that has been another edition of Barely Contained. And like moths drawn to a flame, we hope that you are drawn to our Twitter, which is at barely underscore pods. Thanks for listening. I've been Chris Beckett. I've been Matt Withers. ta Bye!